I'm here with uh, Carl Jacob and Larry Mitchell of Polywans. Well, starting out real quick, the relationship between you two. I know uh, in the movie you were brother-in-laws, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And have you known each other for a while? Because you guys have great chemistry, like you're great pals. Yeah, we've known each other for a while. A few years. Since 2008, maybe, something like yeah. that. Okay. We met, uh, we met in New York. Uh, Larry's uh, done a lot of stage acting in New York City, and I've seen a lot of stuff that he's in. And then we've worked together briefly on a feature called uh, Happy New Year uh, a couple of years ago. Okay. Something that I was a producer on, and right. both, we both had small roles in. Yeah. Okay. And you kind of did some producing. I did near some the end. producing near the end for the yeah. film festival stuff. We were at the South by Southwest. Carl wore his um, pink camo. Do you have to tell the story? Yes, yeah, so of course, please. It was a scarring <laughs> experience. Be, be, because I, apparently swimsuits are optional. <laughs> yeah, it's well, kind of. It's kind of real. Am I that transparent? It's kind of real. He left a pair of pink camouflage <laughs> bathing suits hanging in my shower. I like pink. Yeah. <laughs> And this I, goes good with my skin. You know how there's like a moth on the wall and you sort of stay away from that area? <laughs> well, that's what it was like. Okay. Was, uh, <laughs> anyway. Fantastic. Yeah, that's how we do it. <laughs> so you guys have been... So, so, so did you keep in touch in two, uh, 2008? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've, we've been in touch. Uh, off and on the whole time. Yeah. Um, yeah we, we have some of the sort of same friends and we see all of them. Oh, okay. And we'll just catch up and see all of them. This whole production really is 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 my friends and family. I mean, there's there are very few people on the production that I didn't already have a pretty solid relationship with. Right. Um, you know, and I did that by design because it's I was wearing a lot of hats and I just wanted to have a group of people around me that I really trusted. Everybody, you, you had mentioned that that this was your your family uh, reunion and you called yeah. everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We. Um, well, the, the, the film is shot during my actual family reunion, so the actors and I rehearsed for six months, and uh, then I drop them into the middle of the family reunion after they've had time, they had time to really solidify their characters and were able to answer anything in character at the drop of the hat. You know, it's important to be prepared for that, because it's an improvised movie. Right. Um, yeah, it's, it's got a pretty solid story structure, but uh, all the dialogue is improvised. And you were, well, something I was curious about was uh, the reason that you, you know, chose to do the family reunion, you know, have, the, have that as the backdrop, was it because you were wearing so many hats that it made it a little easier to, you know, have, you know, all this activity going on that would be natural and an impromptu uh, manner? Uh, I, I don't think it was because I was wearing so many hats that, that uh, I chose to do it at the family reunion. Um, I chose to do it at the family re reunion because I wanted to have a very natural feel, and I wanted, to, I, you know, I'm a huge fan of naturalism, and and I wanted that to come across. And I thought, well, what better way to have a very natural family than to use my actual family, you know, because they were right. um, available and they were excited about being involved. Right. Yeah, yeah, my sister and and my dad and my grandparents and my aunts and uncles and my cousins. Yeah, they're all in it. And what was their feeling when uh, you told them about what you were going to do and wanted them in the movie? Um, they were excited. They were um, interested in you know, being a part of it, and they were interested in seeing, I guess, something new that isn't part of their everyday lives in terms of seeing how a, a set operates, that kind of stuff. You know, <laughs> our set was pretty small. Yeah, I, I don't know if I would even call it a set. It was kind of like we were just at like summer camp had, and we happened to be making a movie. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Larry, uh, did you know uh, Carl's family as well? I didn't. I, I actually, I don't think I'd ever met any of them, right, until they really? got on set. Um, but they're so amazingly willing to just continue on as normal, no matter who shows up. Um, you know, something that's ch the dynamic changes a lot every time someone shows up. These people are just always the same. They're always so welcoming and really. Want I'm a big fan of Carl's family, <laughs> and, and he doesn't. You know, I have no really reason to say that other than that's true. And you see it in the movie, though, because they're like, Ron, your dad is so, like, himself. And this yeah. guy, first time I met him, he just showed up and started working on the lake house. And I didn't know who he was. I said, well, I guess that's the maintenance guy. Right? 
<laughs> you know, in a way. But it was just his father, and, you know, like, they, he's just, they're just great, great people. We all got along very well, and what you see in the film is very much like what it was the entire time we were there. It's fun, light, you know, they're always cooking stuff, and they're so friendly, and, you know, and your grandfather. Yeah, you know, has one of the better lines in the movie. <laughs> I love when you have that one scene where you see him just walking in the back. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. it's not his own world. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's so great. Grandpa on the walker during the heavy metal music. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, it's it's that kind of you know, what do you call that? Dissonance, maybe. I don't know. Counterpoint, whatever. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'll go with you on yeah, that. Yeah, it's just you know, it's it's kind of ridiculous. The more time I spent away from Minnesota after sort of graduating and getting away, the more I became fascinated with these little slices of the culture that um, don't seem out of the ordinary until you come back and you're able to sort of realize that you don't really see this anywhere else. You know, like, <laughs> like Grandpa on his walker <laughs> going through, walking through the grass during a heavy metal concert at a family reunion. Kind of ridiculous. Yeah, you know, it's great. I mean, these little things that are out <laughs> there. Awesome. That, yeah, yeah, that really capture gives you a great mood. Yeah, you were saying that you guys practiced uh, the, the the core cast practice for six months together. Yeah. So were you in character when you guys did that? Were you his brother-in-law you know, during those six months, or were you actors you know, in and out of the scene that you practiced? Well, no, we were actors in and out of the scene. I think that what you're talking about um, happened more when we got to Minnesota because we were living together and we were all at the lake house and sort of you felt like you were always filming because we would film all night and film the next day and so that sort of thing where you were like you felt like we were actually brother-in-law sort of started morphing on the you know, first or second day on set but when we were rehearsing it was more you know we would start an improv and then we would go through it and sometimes they were long and then uh, but it would be structured and then at the end of it we would then discuss you know, and he would send the video out to um, to L A T, and they would talk about it too. So, yeah. um, so it was pretty structured, but it was definitely an actor and director sort of process. Does that makes sense. Yeah, well, absolutely, yeah. because you could feel like there was a connection, you know, beyond just you know actors. That there was like a familial connection. Well, yeah. Larry's also Larry's also an amazing actor, so. Yeah, he can. He can. That that that. It doesn't take long for him to establish that connection with any actor. Right. Yeah. I can't say the same thing about myself. Oh, that's not true. Yeah. <laughs> so Larry was the rock. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Larry. Larry, Larry held the movie together. Yeah, yeah. Two way street. Like so, the other person's not doing anything, and you got true. nothing to play. So. Yeah, I mean, I love that one scene. That yeah. That's yeah. A comedian story. But that, that, all that rehearsal did help sort of do shortcuts for chemistry because after a while you learn how someone's going to work and sort of the ideas you can bounce off of them without going wildly off track. Like, you know, long form improv is not about being funny, it's about, you know, telling a story. So yeah. that was sort of how this all came about. You know, right? you know I, I wanted to ask you, you had mentioned that uh, some of the story was. Uh, from your own experience, yeah. the message that you got, and actually parts of yeah, the message you heard. Yeah, it's still a work of fiction. But, uh, <laughs> it, um, so, how much of, uh, I want to ask you, Larry, how much of the story uh, did you add to uh, Carl's, you know, some of your personal experience? Or was it just um, basically off of Carl's and... Well, I think the, the main thrust of the story, like the spine of what's happening, um, was mainly, I mean, we talked a little bit about that, but a lot of what we talked about maybe changed in terms of what Bo and Dylan, they're, like they're originally their relationship was very different, you know, he was not the best friend and, and those kinds of things. Yeah. He was sort of like just um, her husband or something. Yeah. And um, as we rehearsed, that sort of morphed, and so we talked about that, and that certainly affects the spine of the story, but it was always this woman coming back and sort of this childhood thing, this idea of, if only I had ever, you know, I should have, could have, would have. Right. And then you find out that you did and you should have, you know. Basically. I mean, but the, the workshopping part of, of creating this movie was just as much fun as actually shooting it, you know. And it, it really, um, it really did serve the story. You know, I gave, I gave all the actors a, additional material credit as a result because we all, we all collaborated on, on building this, this story together. Right. So, um, 
yeah, in terms of the New York stuff, that's what it was. It was workshopping. We would we would improvise and then we would, you know, take take some time off and then come back and re-improvise after some modifications to the characters that happened. And then at the same time, you know, all the characters were doing research on their backstories for yeah. sort of the more mundane parts of life, so that they could answer questions like, "Where do I buy milk in the morning?" You know, Maybe. there's actually a lot of good stuff that yeah. never made it into the movie that was really funny. Uh, in terms of your backstory, yeah, we, we were like trophy shop owners, close yeah. families, cups, and all this kind of <laughs> stuff. But it was we, Jenny and I went into backstory pretty heavy, and then we would sort of pass it through, you know, the filter of Carl and and, the, and how it fit into the story. A lot of that never made it into the movie, although some of it was very funny when yeah. we shot it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, but that did change. That process sort of began morphing the story into what it is now. And the characters changed, and you know, I think Sarah changed too. I think, she, I think something was different about her, but I don't remember. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of changes as you discover the chemistry, and as you dis discover sort of what is more powerful. And even after you watched a couple of things, I think we tweaked some storyline just here and there, like little things that tighten it up as we were going. I yeah. remember. Yeah, because yeah, we were we were editing on set. Well, I wasn't, but Dustin DeFay was. <laughs> so. Um, we were able to go in and also consult with him and, and you know, have the editing of the story be part of the actual production process, uh, which is, I think, crucial when you work in this kind of environment in terms of, you know, you know the, the, the sacrifice of um, not having a script leads to a more natural feeling performance, but also um, makes you reliant on pretty much every step of the way while you're doing it, if you want it to actually turn out without any holes, you know, because if you get to the editing room and there's nothing left, you're, you're missing a piece, like, you don't have the option of coming back to shoot it at that point. Yeah, it's not, a, not on our budget. Right? <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, definitely not on our budget. Well, you know, that's funny, because that leads, that leads perfectly to my last question. I wanted to ask, you know, uh, in, in this unique process that you use uh, in this film, uh, what advice would you give to someone who wants to follow you know, a similar type of uh, filmmaking? Oh, there's a whole lot of advice to give. I, I mean, I'm not sure where to begin. I guess, I guess the first part is, you know, work work with people that, that you trust and people who are passionate about the project. That that's that's the first and most important step. I think, you know, there's the saying that casting is everything, but I would say that doesn't end with the cast, you know, like your crew needs to be people who are excited about what you're doing and people who you trust and um, and people who, uh, you know, who's <laughs> trying trying to get people who's, whose egos aren't going to get in the way of the, the, the greater good of the film is really important. Um, you know, and I think we had that. And if we didn't have that, it would have made it much, much more difficult. You know, when, when you don't have money as an incentive to keep people on set, you need to have other things. And, and passion is, is always better, I think, in this kind of environment. Yeah. Larry, how about, how about you? Any, what about you know, I, I think, we have a soapbox a little bit, but I, I, I think one of the trickier things about doing this kind of thing is you have to, you know, often bad sort of improv things or just a bunch of people going around trying to be funny, you know. And I think the key is is to remember the story points and actually write yeah. scenes as you're going and remember that there's a sort of technique involved in that. And you know, some people see this and it's very like real and natural and they're like, oh it looks very easy and we'll just go make a movie and they go buy a camera and shoot it and then they submit it to a festival and it's Yet another one that everybody else that has done good stuff has to get by, you know. And, um, <laughs> and I think people need to learn storytelling. I mean, truthfully, like yeah. story structure and, and 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 hire people that are more talented than you all across the board. Like yeah. you said, don't be afraid of that um, because the people you surround yourself with are the, the five, like you know Dustin and Ben, all these people are amazing, amazing talent. They're so good at what they do. They're even good at what they don't do. Yeah. I mean, that's this is Dustin's first movie as an editor. He's I'm gonna say Dustin is a genius. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't I say that about anybody, but he's just the smartest dude in the room in a freaky way. Like, <laughs> his movies are great. Like, not about everything, but he's he's a really a fan, obviously. Yeah. So. 
And I know there are links uh, socially that people can find out. Uh, yeah, you know the, the the same old stuff. We're on Twitter, Polywogs Movie, uh, and then we're on Facebook as well. Um, but the quickest way to get to all that stuff is just going to our website, polywogsmovie.com. Um, we also <laughs> continue to have expenses. Uh, so we have we have a little Kickstarter like donation page on polywogsmovie.com. We just click the donate button, um, and signing up for the mailing list uh, entitles you to uh, the first uh, announcements of any screenings that'll be in your area. Because we're we're planning on taking a movie all over the country in one way or another. Uh, we have a couple of you know things uh, in the works, but nothing that th when things get solidified, they get announced on the website and through the mailing list. So. Um, if you want to see this movie in the theater, which I recommend, because it's, uh, it looks so good on the big screen. Yeah, Ben Kaselke is a really amazing photographer, and seeing seeing that stuff on a big screen just really adds a whole new layer of life to it. So. Fantastic. You know, guys, you know, great job. And, you know, thanks for taking the time. Yeah, Appreciate yeah. It. No problem. Thank you so much. Thanks.